Okay, so last year you learned that you can produce aldehydes and ketones by oxidation from primary alcohols and secondary alcohols respectively. Now we learn we can actually reverse that process. We can actually reduce aldehydes and ketones, so the opposite of oxidation, to form those alcohols again. So opening statement here is that aldehydes and ketones can be reduced to form primary and secondary alcohols respectively. So essentially, like I said, the opposite of the oxidation process from those primary and secondary alcohols to aldehydes and ketones. Now our reagent here is NABH4, which looks a little bit weird, but I'm gonna give you the name of that in a sec, but it's NABH4 in alcoholic solution, okay? So there needs to be an alcohol, but then does need to be some water in there as well. So it's alcoholic solution. So NABH4 in alcohol. Now the full name of this funny looking molecule is sodium tetrahydridoborate. Don't worry about remembering it, okay? If you're gonna be asked you know, what the reagent is in the exam, you write NABH4, job done, okay? You don't need to write the name. You know, why write the full name when the formula will do? Because you are doing chemistry after all, ladies and gents. Now the full thing isn't actually used in the mechanism. It's actually represented by the H minus ion. So it's a hydrogen atom that's gained an electron. So it's got two electrons, full outer shell. So it's got a lone pair. So this is a nucleophile. And yes, I did use the M word, ladies and gentlemen. We do need to know the mechanism for this. Speaking of which, the mechanism for this reduction is known as a nucleophilic addition mechanism. So we've got a nucleophile our H minus, and yes, we're adding hydrogen into these molecules because we're reversing the oxidation. So we're adding hydrogen in, and I'll come back to that in a second. But first of all, the mechanism. So let's take a look at aldehydes first. So with aldehydes, we're expecting to reduce this molecule back to a primary alcohol, okay? So we're gonna set out our stall like we normally would for a mechanism, nice and big, nice and clear, and we're showing this carbonyl group, that's what we're focusing on, because that's what our nucleophile, our H-, minus, is going to attack. Of course, it needs something to attack, so we need to make sure we put the dipole on our carbonyl group, otherwise it's got nothing to have a go at. We need something positive for that nucleophile to attack. Now, the first part of this mechanism is the H minus that attacks our delta positive carbon. So that's our first curly arrow, the movement of that pair of electrons on the hydrogen to that delta positive carbon. Now, of course, that means there's five bonds now looking to be arranged around that central carbon it can't have that. So of course, something has to give, and that something is the C double bond O. It's the pi bond in that that breaks by heterolytic fission, okay? So it's the weaker of those two bonds in that double bond that breaks. And it splits by heterolytic fission, so a curly arrow from the bond to the delta negative oxygen. And that gives us a fully negative oxygen, which is our intermediate. So what we end up with is a tetrahedral intermediate where our R group, obviously that doesn't change, the hydrogen that was originally there stays there. We now have another hydrogen bonded to that carbon from the H minus, that's what that is. And of course, like I said, that fully negative oxygen because that's now got a lone pair from the bond it did have with the carbon. So that can't stay like that, it's very unstable. Now I mentioned water before, yes the NABH4 is an alcoholic solution but there is some water present as well and that's what comes to save the day when it comes to finalizing the, the production of our alcohol. So the delta positive hydrogen from a water molecule is attracted to that fully negative oxygen in this intermediate. So it's the lone pair on the oxygen that attacks the delta positive hydrogen on the water molecule, okay? So it's gonna attract that water molecule over, it's gonna to bond to that hydrogen. Now, of course, that hydrogen can't maintain two bonds. So again, something has to give, and what gives is the hydrogen to oxygen bond in the water. So that HO bond in water breaks by heterolytic fission, okay? And that leaves an OH minus just kind of floating around. Uh, so it makes the solution more alkaline. So this is what we get. We get our primary alcohol. It's a primary alcohol. Why? Because there are two hydrogens bonded to that carbon where the OH is. It's on carbon number one, essentially. So that's our primary alcohol. And as a byproduct, we do get the OH minus, okay? Because the water, that split heterolytically, so we form a hydroxide ion in solution. So yes, we are going from an aldehyde to a primary alcohol. 
This mechanism, if you've already seen the video for HCN with uh, carbonyls, nucleophilic addition, it's exactly the same mechanism, okay? Exactly the same mechanism, but we need to involve the water in this one in that second part, in that intermediate part of the reaction. The overall reaction is a little nicer to write, okay? The overall reaction is basically an aldehyde plus two hydrogens in square brackets. Now that H in square brackets, if you remember when we did oxidation, we used an O in square brackets because we're actually taking hydrogen away or adding oxygen. This time we're reducing it. So the H in square brackets represents reduction. So aldehyde plus two H gives us a primary alcohol. And if you notice in here, one H we're adding, second H, we're adding. So that's where those two H's come from. So that H in square brackets represents reduction, ladies and gents. Now that's aldehydes. Ketones, you will be very pleased to hear, are exactly the same. So when it comes to ketones, all we need to make sure we do is when we draw our initial molecule, that it is actually a ketone. So that carbonyl group's in the middle of a carbon chain in a secondary position, if you like. So you've got R groups either side rather than an R and a H. But the mechanism from that point is exactly the same. So if you follow your nose through the mechanism, okay, uh, H minus attacking the delta positive on the C, the pi bond between the C and the O breaking heterolytically. Then in our intermediate, water comes along, donates that H plus to complete the uh, alcohol group the, on the OH. And we end up with our secondary alcohol. Why is it a secondary alcohol? Because there's one hydrogen attached to the carbon where the OH is. Don't forget, we have gone from a ketone, it is in the middle of a carbon chain. And of course, we end up with our OH minus present as well. So we make our secondary alcohol using exactly the same mechanism, but this time, of course, you know, it has to be from a ketone. Now, overall, in terms of that using that H in square brackets, it's just the same as above. This time, of course, it's a ketone plus two H in square brackets, and that gives us our secondary alcohol. So overall here, know that we can reduce aldehydes and ketones. We can reverse the oxidation process to go back and reform our alcohols again. So in terms of working your way around in terms of organic synthesis, maybe sometimes you'll need to do this. Our reagent, NaBH4 in alcoholic solution, okay? It's represented by that H minus with the lone pair in the mechanism. This mechanism, exactly the same as your HCN mechanism, except this time, of course, you need to use water in this second part of the mechanism here. When it comes to mechanisms, again, they're both exactly the same. Just remember, you're going to primary and secondary alcohols from aldehydes and ketones, respectively. Be wary in an exam for one mark if they want you to write an equation for the reduction of, I don't know, propanal to propan 1-ol, this is what you give them. If they want the mechanism for propanal to propan 1-ol, this is what you give them. So this is gonna be worth like three marks, okay? When I mention the M word, this is gonna be worth one mark. And likewise down here. So be very careful about what they're asking you to do in a question. And the number of marks in an exam is gonna be a giveaway in terms of what they want as well. So that's your reduction of aldehydes and ketones.